Mr. Croft sniffled. I would have arrested. Helen shook her head and picked up one of the grocery bags. I picked up the other one and followed her through the parlor and into the kitchen. The bags were filled with cans of soup which Helen opened up one by one with a few cranks of a can opener. She tossed the old soup in the saucepans into the sink, rinsed the pans under the tap, filled them with soup from the newly opened cans and put them back in the refrigerator. A few years ago, she could still open the cans herself, Helen said. She hates that I do it for her now, but the piano killed her hands. She put on her spectacles, glanced at the cupboards and spotted my tea bags. Shall we have a cup? Means shall we have tea? I filled the kettle at, on the stove. I beg your pardon, madam, the piano. She used to give lessons for 40 years. It was how she raised us after she looked after us after my father died. Helen is saying, Helen put her hands on her hips, staring at the open refrigerator in this way. She was because she was also old. Now, a wrapped stick of butter, thrown and tossed it into the garbage that ought to do it. She she said, and put the unopened cans of soup in the cupboard. I sat at the table and watched as Helen washed the dirty dishes, tied up the garbage bag, watered a spider, plant over the sink and poured boiling water into two cups. She handed one to me without milk, the string of the tea bag, tailing over the side and sat down at the table. Excuse me, madam, but is it enough? Excuse me, madam. But uh, is it enough? Helen took a sip of her tea. Her lipstick left a smiling pink stain on the inside rim of the cup. Is what enough? What are you talking about? The soup in the pans. Is it enough food for Mrs. Croft? Is it enough food? Means uh, is she satisfied with this much only? She won't eat anything else. She stopped eating solids after she turned 100. <laughs> now only the author, the writer comes to know of her age. That was, let's see, three years ago. Actually, three years before, she became 100. Means now she is 100 plus 3. What? I was mortified. I was shocked. Stunned. I had assumed Mrs. Crop was in her 80s, perhaps as old as 90. I had never known a person who had lived for over a century that this person was a widow who lived alone mortified me further still. It was that now only the writer came to know. Okay, It was widowhood that had driven my own mother insane. My father who worked as a clerk at the general post office of Calcutta died off. Encephalitis is a disease when I was 16. My mother refused to adjust to life without him. Actually, this is Indian culture. Hmm? Widowhood is too much painful. Instead, she sank deeper into a world of darkness from which neither I Neither I, nor my brother, no concerned relatives, no psychiatric clinics on Rajbihari Avenue could save her. What pained me most was to see her unguarded, to hear her burp after meals or expel gases, gas in front of the company without slightest embarrassment. Actually, these are features of old people. Okay, students, so nothing different is there. After my father's death, my brother abandoned, means left his schooling and began to work in the jute mill he would eventually manage. He looked after us in order to keep the household running because of the untimely death of my father. And so it was my job to sit by my mother's feet and study for my exams as she counted and recounted the bracelets on her arm as if they were the beads of an abacus. We tried to keep an eye on her once she had wandered half naked to the 
pram depot before we were able to bring her inside again actually these are common old age features okay man is just insane means not in his senses i am happy to warm mrs crop's soup in the evenings i suggested removing the tea bag from my cup and squeezing out the liquor it is no trouble helen looked at her watch stood up and poured the rest of her tea into the sink i would not if i were you that is the sort of thing that would kill her altogether that evening when helen had gone back to allington and mrs croft and i were left all alone again i began to worry now that i knew how very old she was i worried that something would happen to her in the middle of the night or when i was out during the day as vigorous as her voice vigorous means powerful and imper imperious as she seemed crazy as she seemed i knew that even a scratch on a cuff or a cuff could kill a person that old this was her old age right each day she lived i knew was something of a miracle although helen had seemed friendly enough a small part of me worried that she might accuse me of negligence if anything were to happen helen did not seem worried she came and went bringing soup of mrs for mrs croft one sunday after the next sunday okay in this manner the six weeks of that summer passed i came home each evening after my hours at the library and spent a few minutes on the piano bench with mrs croft i gave her a bit of my company and assured her that i had checked at the lock and told her that the flag on the moon was planted all these had become customs okay some evenings i sat beside her long after she had drifted off to sleep still in awe of how many years she had spent on this earth at times i tried to picture the world she had been born into in 1866 she might have been born a world i imagine filled with women in long black skirts and chaste conversations means pious holy conversations in the parlor now when i looked at her hands with their swollen knuckles folded together in her lap i imagined them smooth and slim striking the piano keys at times i came downstairs before going to sleep to make sure that she was sitting upright on the bench or was safe in a bedroom i just used to come down just to assure whether she was in her bedroom or not on fridays i made sure to put the rent in her hands there was nothing i could do for her beyond these simple gestures only these things i could do i was not her son and apart from those 88 dollars i owed her nothing i had to do nothing for her except paying 8 dollars per week on every friday at the end of august mala's passport and green card were ready i received a telegram with a flight information my brother's house in calcutta had no telephone around that time i also re received a letter from her written only a few days after we had parted there was no salutation addressing me by name would have assumed an intimacy we had not actually we had not got intimated so it contained only a few lines i write in english in preparation for the journey here i am very much lonely is it very cold there is there snow yours mala actually these are the content of the letters the writer was sent by his wife mala all these are queries right i was not touched by her words we had spent only a handful of days in each other's company that's why we didn't know each other very well and i was not at all fascinated right because i had no bonding that much bonding and we and yet we were bound together for 6 weeks she had worn an iron bangle on her wrist and applied vermilion powder you know students vermilion powder in indian ethics married women use this apply this on their head just as a symbol of their husband that they are married vermilion powder to the part in her hair to signify to the world that she was a bride in those 6 weeks i regarded her arrival as i would the 
arrival of a coming month or season something inevitable unavoidable she was to come means she was to come but meaningless at the time so little i did i know her that while details of face sometimes rose to my memory i could not conjure up the whole of it a few days after receiving the letter as i was walking to work in the morning i saw an indian woman on the other side of the of massachusetts avenue wearing a sari with its free and nearly dragging on the footpath and pushing a child in a stroller an american woman with a small black dog on a leash was walking to one side of her suddenly the dog began barking from the other side of the street i watched as the indian woman startled stopped in a path at which point the dog leapt up and seized the end of the sari between its teeth the american woman called it the dog appeared to apologize and walked quickly away leaving the indian woman to fix her sari in the middle of a foot of the footpath and quiet her crying crying her child she did not see me standing there and eventually she continued on her way such a mishap i realized that morning would soon be my concern one day the same situation would be on my way it was my duty to take care of mala to welcome her and protect her i would have to buy her her first pair of snow boots her first winter coat i would have to tell her which streets to avoid and which way the traffic came tell her to wear her sari so that the free end did not drag on the footpath all these things because the whole atmosphere of culture american culture was quite different that of india right a 5 mile separation from her parents i recalled with some irritation had caused her to weep unlike mala i was used to it by all by then she used to conflict means i was used to conflicts and milk used to helen's visits used to sitting on the bench with mrs croft the only thing i was not used to was mala actually i was used to i had got used to each and everything while being in america over there but now i was feeling a bit difference because i was not used to remain with my wife mala nevertheless however i did what i had to do i went to i went to the housing office at mit and found a furnished apartment a few blocks away with a double bed and a private kitchen and bath for 40 dollars a week to mrs croft he was paying 8 dollars but now here 40 dollars a week okay one last friday i handed mrs croft 8 1 dollar bill in an envelope brought my suitcase downstairs and informed her that i was moving she put my key into her change purse the last thing she asked me to do was to hand her the can propped against the table means getting support it was standing against the wall against the suitcase against the table so that she could walk to the door and lock it behind me goodbye then she said and retreated back to the house i did my i did not expect any display of emotion but i was disappointed all the same actually i thought that she might have got emotionally attached with me but she did not show any sign of emotions to me i was only a boarder a man who paid her bit of money and passed it and out of her home for 6 weeks compared to a century it was no time at all at the airport i recognized mala immediately the free end of a sari did not drag on the floor but was draped in a sign of bridal modesty over her head means made women cover their head with one of the ends of the sari just as it had draped my mother until the day my father died her thin brown arms were stacked with gold bracelets a small right circle was painted on her forehead and the edges of her feet were tinted with a decorative red dye means she might have applied hina i did not embrace her or kiss her or take her hand because there was no kind of no such kind of bonding actually instead i asked her speaking bengali for the first time in america if she was hungry i told her i had prepared some egg curry at home 
what did they give you to eat on the plane did you eat anything on the plane actually she said i did not eat all the way from calcutta the menu said oxtail soup but surely there were other items the thought of eating an oxtail made me lose my appetite she did not like soup when we arrived home mala opened up opened up one of her suitcases and presented me with two pullover sweaters both made with bright blue wool which she had knitted in the course of her of our separation you know students in those days in 1960s women used to knit sweaters now nowadays it's not in vogue they are machine made one with a v neck and the other covered with cables i tried them on both were tight under the arms she had also brought me two new pairs of drawstring pajamas a letter from my brother and a packet of loose darjeeling tea i had no present for her apart from the egg curry i had prepared only egg curry as a present for her, but she had brought so many things for me we sat at a bare table each of us staring at our plates we ate with our hands another thing i had not yet done in america the house is nice yeah the house is nice she said also the egg curry the egg curry is also nice with her left hand she held the end of a sari to her chest so it would not slip off her head i don't know many recipes i don't know much cooking she noted peeling the skin off each each of her potatoes before eating them at one point the sari slipped to her shoulders she readjusted it at once there is no need to cover your head i said i don't mind it doesn't matter here she kept it covered anyway i told her she she was not supposed to bother about covering her head with the sari okay but she kept it i waited to get used to her to her presence at my side at my table and in my bed but a week later we were still strangers i still was not used to coming home to an apartment that smelled of steamed rice and finding that the basin of the bathroom was always wiped clean our two toothbrushes lying side by side a cake of pure soap from india resting in the soap dish very home atmosphere has been delineated i was not used to the fragrance of the coconut oil she rubbed every other night into her scalp or the delicate sound her bracelets made as she moved about the apartment all these are the signs that a married woman was inside the household in the morning she was always awake before i was the first morning the first morning when i came into the kitchen she had heated up the leftovers and set a plate with a spoonful of salt on its edge on the table assuming i would eat rice for breakfast as most bengali husbands did i told her saril would do and the next and the next morning when i came into the kitchen she had already poured the conflicts into my bowl one morning she walked with me down massachusetts avenue to mit where i gave her a short tour of the campus and actually i just want wanted to take her round over there right so on the way she stopped at a hardware store and i made a copy of the key so that she could left she could let herself into the apartment the next morning before i left for work she asked me for a few dollars i parted with them reluctantly means unwanted means i i was not willing but i knew that this wa- this too was now normal when i came home from work there was a potato peeler in the kitchen drawer and a tablecloth on the table and chicken curry made with fresh garlic and ginger on the stove now it was purely a married atmosphere we did not have a television in those days after dinner i read the newspaper while mala sat at the kitchen table working on a cardigan working on a cardigan for herself with more of the bright blue wool or writing letters home at the end of her first week on friday i suggested going out mala set down her knitting and disappeared into the bathroom when she emerged 
when she came out i regretted the suggestion she had put on a clean silk sari and extra bracelets and coiled her hair with a flat ring side part on top of her head she was prepared as it for a party or at the very least of the for the cinema she thought but i had no such destination in my mind the evening air was balmy and she walked several blocks down massachusetts avenue looking into the windows of restaurants and shops then without thinking i led her down the quiet street where for so many nights i had walked all alone this was the difference this is where i lived before you came i said stopping at mrs croft's chain link fence in such a big house you used to live she was surprised i had a small room upstairs at the back who else lives there a very old woman i said that a very old woman lived over there uh, you used to live with her family <laughs> no no i was all alone and uh, she was also living all alone but who takes care of her i opened the gate for the most part she takes care of herself i wondered if mrs crop would remember me i wondered if she had a new boarder to sit with her on the bench each evening when i pressed the bell i expected the same long wait as that day of our first meeting in the evening you know you remember students when i did not have a key but this time the door was opened almost immediately by helen mrs crop was not sitting on the bench the bench was gone this was the difference hello there helen said smiling with a bright pink lips at mala mother is in the parlor will you be visiting a while as you wish madam then i think i will run to the store if you don't mind she had a little accident actually my mother has met with an accident that's why she is in the parlor we can't leave her alone these days not even for a minute i locked the door after helen and after helen had walked into the parlor mrs crop was lying flat on her back her head was on peach colored cushion a thin white quilt spread over her body her hands were folded together on top of her chest when she saw me she pointed at the sofa and told me to sit down i took my place as directed but mala one wandered over to the piano and sat on the bench which was now positioned where it belonged i broke my hip she said i met with an accident and in that accident i broke my hip mrs crop announced as if no time had passed oh dear madam i fell off the bench i am so sorry madam it was the middle of the night do you know what i what i did boy i shook my head i called the police she stared up the up at the ceiling and grinned sadly exposing a crow crowded row of long gray teeth not one was missing she was such kind of amazing lady what do you say to that boy as stunned as i was i knew what i had to say with no hesitation at all i cried out splendid splendid mala laughed then her voice was full of kindness her eyes bright with amusement i had never heard of heard her laugh before and it was loud enough so that mrs croft had heard too she turned to mala and glared who is she boy she is my wife madam she is my wife mrs crop pressed her head at an angle against the cushion to get a better look can you play the piano no madam mala replied then stand up who told you to sit down over there at the piano stand up mala rose to her feet adjusting the end of a sari over her head and holding it to her chest and for the first time since her arrival i felt sympathy for my wife i remembered my first days in london learning how to take the tube to russell square riding an escalator for the first time being unable to understand that when the man cried piper it meant paper actually this is the difference of pronunciation in india we say paper but in um, but in the uk and us they say piper news piper piper so i said piper and in india piper means something different okay being unable to decipher to decode it for a while whole year that the conductor said mind the gap 
as the train pulled away from each station like me mala had traveled far from home not knowing where she was going or what she would find because no reason other than to be my wife as strange as it seemed i knew in my heart that one day her death would affect me and stranger still that mine would affect her my death would affect her her death would affect me i wanted somehow to explain this to mrs crop who was still scrutinizing means investigating properly looking observantly at mala from top to toe with what she seemed to placid disdain she hated i wondered if mrs croft had ever seen a woman in a sari with a dot printed on her forehead and bracelets stick on her wrist i wondered whether she had seen i wondered what she would object to i wondered if she could see the red dye still vivid still clear on mala's feet all but obscured means unclear by the bottom edge of a sari at last mrs croft declared announced with equal measures of disbelief and delight i knew well she is a perfect lady she is a perfect lady means she gave this compliment now it was i now it was i who loved it was my turn to love earlier mala loved right i did so quietly and mrs crop did not hear me but mala had heard and for the first time we looked at each other and smiled now bonding was growing stronger and stronger i like to think of that moment in mrs croft's parlor as the moment when the distance between mala and me began to lessen this was the first time when the distance between me and my wala and my wife mala was lessening means we were coming closer to each other right although we were not yet fully in love i like to think of the months that followed as a honeymoon of sorts together we explored the city and met other bengalis some of whom are still friends today we discovered that a man named bill sold fresh fish on prospect street and that a shop in howard square called cardulos sold bay leaves and cloves bay leaves student one of the spices okay cloves one of the spices in the evening we walked to the charles river to watch sail boats drift across the water and had ice cream once in howard yard we bought an instamatic camera with which to document our life together and i took pictures of her posing in front of the prudential building so that she could send them to her parents in this way we were enjoying just like a honeymoon time period at night we kissed shy at first but quickly bold and discovered pleasure and solace in each other's arms very vivid description is there of married life i told her about my voyage on the ss roma the ship vessel and about finsbury park and the ymca means he is telling her about his previous days when he was here first time and my evenings on the bench with mrs croft when i told her stories about my mother she wept it was mala who consoled me when reading the globe one evening that newspaper the globe okay i came across mrs croft's obituary means a kind of information when somebody passes away okay so i had not thought of her in several months by then those six weeks of the summer were already were already a remote interlude in my past but when i learned of her death i was stricken so much that so much so that when mala looked up from her knitting she found me staring at the wall the newspaper neglected in my lap i didn't feel like reading newspaper unable to speak mrs cop was the first death i mourned in america i had a unique and strange bonding with mrs cop that's why i was really uh, not able to believe whether she was dead so mrs cop was the first death i mourned in america because hers was the first life i had admired she had left this world at last ancient and alone never to return as for me i have not strayed much farther mala and i live in a town strayed means move about a town about 20 miles from boston on a tree lined street much like mrs crofts in a house we own with a garden that saves us from buying tomatoes in summer and room for guests we 
uh, American citizens now so that we can collect social security when it is time. You know, it has been given. He had already got green card over there. Though we visit Calcutta every few years and bring back more drawstring pyjamas and Darjeeling tea, we have decided to grow old here. I work in a small college library. We have a son who attends Harvard University. Mala no longer drapes the end of a sari over her head because in the very beginning she used to but now she doesn't or weeps at night for her parents but now she is not missing because she is used to each and everything. Occasionally she weeps for her for our son so we drove to Cambridge to visit him or bring him home for a weekend means in a boarding school their son is reading so that he can eat rice with us with his hands and speak in Bengali things we sometimes worry he will no longer do after we die actually we do not know whether he will be speaking Bengali after our death or not Whenever we make that drive, I always make it a point to take Massachusetts Avenue in spite of the traffic. I barely, I hardly recognize the buildings now but each time I am there I return instantly to those six weeks as if they were only the other day. It, it was not much past, much long and I slow down and point to Mrs. Croft Street saying to my son, here was my first home in America where I lived with a woman who was 103, remember? Mala says and smiles amazed as I am that there was ever a time that we were strangers you know they are telling each and everything to their son. My son always expresses his astonishment not at Mrs. Croft's age but at how little I paid in rent only eight dollars a week not nearly inconvincible amount to him as a flag on the moon was to a woman born in 1866. In my son's eyes, I see the ambition that had first hurled me across the world. In a few years, he will graduate and pave his way alone and unprotected. Now he will be mature enough. But I remain my, remind myself that he has a father who is still living unlike me, who has already lost his father. A mother who is happy and strong, but I have lost my father. Right? I tell him that. If I can survive on three continents, then there is no obstacle. He cannot. He cannot conquer. So, he is talking about these three continents. India means Asia, Europe means UK and USA means North America. While the astronauts, heroes, forever spent mere hours on the moon, I have remained on this new world for nearly 30 years. I have been living on this continent for past 30 years. I know that my achievement is quite ordinary. Yeah, I am not the only man to seek his fortune far from home and certainly I am not the first. Still there are times I am bewildered, I am confused by each mile. I have traveled, each meal I have eaten, each person I have known, each room in which I have slept, as ordinary as it all appears. There are times when it is beyond my imagination. So students, now the language is very much easy and the chapter is very much interesting, full of Indian story and uh, the atmosphere is very, uh, very similar to ours. So I hope you all might have got it. So this is something about the writer author of this chapter, Jhumpa Lahiri, an Indian Bengali born in London, 1967, lives in New York with her husband and son. This story is from her collection, Interpreter of Maladies. In 1999, it was written as a bestseller in 2000, both in USA and elsewhere. In addition to the Pulitzer Prize, she has received a number of awards for the work which, which has been translated into 29 languages and one of the very interesting chapters written by, written by Jhumpa Lahiri, the great writer. Her stories revolve around the lives of Indians in diasporic situations that is of Indians living abroad, Indians who have been brought up in, tra in a traditional India but are now encountering the baffling new world in USA. So a student, the language is very simple and interesting that's why this chapter has become very much easier for you to understand but in case you come across any kind of doubts, just do not feel hesitation and come out with your doubts and we will surely help you out and uh, let me take leave of you extending my heartfelt thanks to you 
and see you some other day with some other topic till then have a nice time thank you